Would you join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Call. I for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We thank you. Okay. Please. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. The first item on the agenda, the planning department recommends the following items for adjournment as we have insufficient information to act upon them. <clears throat> Part two, item three, number 2011-01, All Seasons Motor Lodge. Item four, number 2010-06, KVC Holdings. Item five, number 2009-05, FB4 Realty. Part three, item six, number 1059, Prestige Estates. Item seven, number 1000A, Soundview Estates. Item 10, number 773, Scholar Estates. Item 12, number 922, Sesame Estates. Item 13, number 1053A, Berg Estates. Item 14, number 911A, Glen Hill Northern. <clears throat> Part four, item 15, the 280A application of Olivia Estates. Uh, part five, uh, the letter of interpretation, number LOI-5 for the Polish National Church. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, these are the items the planning department recommends for adjournment. Is there anybody here representing those applicants to be adjourned? Hearing not a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the items read. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Mr. Chairman, we'll now move on to part one of the agenda, item one, number 1122, O'Mara Platt. The applicant requests final approval to subdivide a 2.884 acre parcel into five single family lots. The map of O'Mara Platt, number 1122, was granted preliminary approval by the board on July 21st, 2010. The final map complies with all the conditions set forth by the planning board for preliminary approval. The proposal consists of two tax lots fronting on Cambon Avenue that contains two existing single family homes and three proposed lots to front on an extension of an existing cul-de-sac known as King Arthur's Court North. The site is surrounded on all sides by the R21 zoning district, single family residential dwellings, minimum lot area 21,780 square feet. As noted in the preliminary approval, variances are required for the three proposed lots to reduce the minimum lot area from 21,780 square feet to 15,082 square feet, 18,893 square feet, and 20,109 square feet, respectively, for lots two, three, and four. Additionally, variances will be required to reduce the minimum lot frontage at setback from the required 100 feet to 82 feet, 81 feet, and 85 feet, respectively, for lots two, three, and four. The board can grant these variances per section 322-30.4 of the town zoning ordinance, including the lot area variances because the overall density of 21,780 square feet per lot meets the R21 standard. The Engineering Highway and Traffic Safety Departments find the map acceptable. The Department of Environment and Waterways has reviewed this map and concluded there have been no substantial changes to the project as originally approved. Therefore, no further environmental review is necessary. The planning department finds that this map is in compliance with the preliminary approval and that the variances requested meet the standards as noted in section 322-30.4 in that, one, it would not produce an adverse impact on adjacent properties, two, the request to reduce the minimum lot area for lots two, three, and four, while more than 10% of the standard for lots two and three would be uniform within this development and other lots in the surrounding area. Three, while the variances could be eliminated, they provide for a better design. Four, there is no adverse impact on the environment. And five, finally, while the difficulty was self-created, the variances meet the other standards for variances. The planning department recommends approval of this final map and offers the following resolution for the board's consideration. 
Be it resolved that the final plat of O'Mara Plat, number 1122, is hereby approved subject to the following conditions. Mr. Chairman, conditions A through L are the standard conditions placed on all subdivision final applications. Condition M is specific to this application. Notwithstanding the terms of this approval, all prior conditions placed on this application during the preliminary approval from any other board of the town or from any town department, county or state agencies shall, shall remain in effect. And be it further resolved that the chairman of the planning board is hereby authorized to sign the final plat, thereby approving said plat after the town board has posted a performance bond of satisfactory form and amount. And be it further resolved that the conditional approval of said final plat shall expire 180 days after the date of this resolution and within 90 days after the chairman of the planning board signs the final maps of this plat, unless said plat shall have been duly filed or recorded by the owner in the office of the Suffolk County Clerk. If the board favorably considers the applicant's variance request, the planning department suggests the following resolution. Be it resolved that the planning board hereby modifies the building zone ordinance of the code of the town of Smithtown for the subdivision known as O'Mara Platt, number 1122, as indicated in the table below. This table shall be shown on the file ma file final map to be filed in the office of the Suffolk County Clerk. Mr. Chairman, this is the planning department's recommendation for O'Mara Platt, number 1122. Is there anybody here representing the applicant? Would you give your name and address, please? John O'Mara, 201 Camp on Avenue St. James. Okay. I have a uh, signage affidavit that I wanted to drop off. You approve of the conditions there as yes, read? Yes, correct. Okay. Is there anybody else in the audience that wishes to speak on this application? Yes, sir. Would you come up to the microphone and give your name and address, please? Uh, good evening. My name is Erwin Hein, E-R-W-I-N-H-E-I-N. -E I, -E I live at 56 King Arthur's Court, St. James, and I'm immediately adjacent to property. I, I want to support John's application, but I do have two, I'll call them concerns, I'd like to raise and get the board's assurance on. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the gentleman at the end of the table. Yesterday he was more than gracious and helpful when I uh, went up to the planning board to, to seek some information. So thank you for your time and your patience. Um, I'm not sure, uh, it was explained to me yesterday that the plot as it's laid out is uh, in compliance with the overall density. However, I'm wondering if the board or the planning commission has looked at what else is there, specifically my lot, which I bought you know, from a builder, and the one adjacent to me are, is also undersized. So that would be five consecutive lots that would be less than the required R21 footage. Um, that in and of itself was explained to me yesterday probably wouldn't be an issue where I'm looking for assurance is that the southeast corner of my property, which is adjacent to the other lot that's also less than R21, is a low spot in King Arthur's Court. So we end up with standing water. If you need my survey, I have it here for you too. Um, we end up with standing water on a day like today in our yards. One of my concerns is that with the closeness of five homes in such a way, would there be sewage, potential sewage issues as water tables rise? So particularly with, again, that uh, southeast corner of my lot, 56 King Arthur Court, is the low spot in that area. So I, I ask for the board's assurance that that would not be an issue. Um, and there are two town drains there. So even with the uh, drains, the standing water remains on our property, not in the roadbed. So it, it, you know, it's a property issue. Uh, the other thing that I would like the town to, uh, to potentially uh, give me assurance of is that what was deemed lot number three is the smallest of lots and is immediately adjacent to my, my home. And I, I would just like the board's assurance that they will not grant any deviance in the positioning of the structure 
which would cause me to look at the back of that home from the front of my home. Uh, do you have any problems there with sewage on your property? Uh, I do not, but my neighbor does. The one that's uh, immediately to the south of me, which was also part of that latest development, they've had to have their uh, tanks pumped uh, on occasion. I, I couldn't tell you exactly how many times, but uh, again, it's a downhill flow. That, that what I call my southeast corner is potentially the lowest spot in, in the area and would be a natural drainage, is a natural uh, drainage. Because uh, mo uh, most all applications there for uh, the Suffolk County Board of Health has to approve okay. the, you know, the sewer drain, so that something like that, I doesn't say it will never happen, but that the chances of it happening there were very slim. Okay. I, but uh, again, there are those applications there that are, that are pending, they'll have to conform to the Suffolk County Board of Health, and if there is a concern, uh, they certainly, they're in the record there. They'll probably, someone there will make sure that the Board of Health there is aware of that. Okay. Okay? I appreciate it. Frank? Right. If there's a problem, uh, normally in this part of St. James, we do not have drainage problems or septic problems. However, I'm looking at the test borings done for this particular site, and this is unusual for that particular area, but there is a clay layer that's located in that general vicinity. Correct. And I would suspect that your neighbor has some sort of a clay layer below his septic system, which is probably ca causing a problem. In this location, uh, the clay is intermittent, and it could be on uh, one property and not another. So it's probably what the, the cause is. But as the chairman said, this is a matter for the health department when they review the septic system. They're the ones that determine whether or not the percolation is correct for that particular area. But it, as you pointed out, it, it's intermittent, but it could be consistent across uh, the area, which would then cause, uh, I would call it a flow plate, a natural, uh, a, the potential for natural water flowing across well, what, the top of it. What normally happens is when they request the building permit, they're gonna, the health department's gonna see these test borings and they're probably going to require some testing on the site before they grant a permission. Okay. Okay, uh, that's, w it's not our uh, 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 role to uh, rule on the septic systems, but we, th we do require a test boring on the site, and it does indicate uh, basically three feet down that you have a, a, a clay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, uh, my, as I say, my concern is that being at, at adjacent to the low point or at the low point, that the potential for an issue could be there. Mm -hmm. So as long as that it's mitigated through whatever, I'm, I'm fine with that. Oh, well, certainly that will be to the attention of the Board of Health as a result there of your comments. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there anybody else that wishes to uh, address there? The it's all right. Mario. Just give your name and address, please. Mario Matera. Uh, 55 King Arthur's Court, St. James, New York. How's everybody? Um, my one question I have is um, R21 zoning. If anybody could give me a heads up. I'm for progress. I'm for development. Um, my question is, with these three lots, I look at the R21 zoning, and I looked at we need approximately 22,000 square feet for R21. Then you need at least a 100-foot minimum for frontage. We have in the 80s, and we do not have the square footages on these three. I feel that the two lots, if you figured it out, 22,000 square feet approximately times three would be 66,000 square feet. If you add those up, you got 44,000 square feet. That, to me, is two lots. We're missing a lot of square footage. We're missing the frontage. I was just wondering, uh, you know, how do we keep our R21 zoning? Well, I think that that's been in part of the review process, hasn't it, Frank? Uh, the yes, but the density is for the overall subdivision. The overall subdivision is half acre densities. There's 2.8 acres here, which means right. uh, you would need two and a half acres of, uh, to meet the R21 standard, and the uh, 0.3 acres is the uh, road. So there's, the density is there. There's no subtraction for environmentally sensitive lands or any other. 
stuff, so the density is there. Uh, the lot sizes are uh, adjusted uh, throughout based upon the configuration of the roadway, uh, but uh, the density meets with, you know, this is within the purview of the board. It meets what we call the density of the area, and that's what you're required to meet under the law. But we have a stand with R21 in my area. So my question again is, do we keep the standard? Because this pretty much looks like to me quarter acre standard, which would, I, you know, it's a little bit above quarter acre, you know, lot sizes here. So my half acre zoning in the area, to be honest with you, R21 is just thrown out the window. I'm for, like I said, I'm for this development, trust me, it's for progress, the road going through. I'm just asking a quick question that, do we feel that, you know, I, I, I went down and saw you yes. about this. I went down and saw you, and, and I would like to know also, too, whose idea was this to, to come through with this uh, subdivision like this? Was it, was it the developer, or was it the town, or was it, was it planning? No, well, the developer has a, the, the person that's going to develop the property has a right to make an application. Yes. And in the preliminary hearing on this, all of that was discussed. I don't know if you made the preliminary hearing, but it, it, that's when it was discussed there, the layout there for the property. Now, it doesn't, there's 2.884 acres in the total plot, so that when you take all of the houses in total to that, to that almost uh, three acres, you have a different there, uh, classification there for uh, how the how the property has been laid out to be able there to qualify for the uh, uh, right, but you're you're adding road into that, sir. What you're adding road into that? No, we're not. No, no. That's not. Do, you're not adding road into the. No. If you go by the square footage of the property in that road, no. that's where your density is coming in, right? You're adding the court. You're adding all that. You look at that one lot that has that temporary, that temporary easement or whatever the temporary court there. You know, like I, I'm saying is the biggest thing here is the R21 to. We have zoning for R21, and I just feel that we got a lot of negatives with this net. I feel that two lots would be sufficient with this application. That's just my view on this. That's all. I live on this block. I, you know what? You have a certain standard. I know when I gave the property to soften the road, I actually personally gave two pieces of property to soften that road to come in. I made sure also, too, with the full court, the whole bit, when that all came in. So, you know, you, know, you want to keep your property values up. I feel that the homes that are going to be going in there are going to be a little squatty because of the way the property is laid out. You have 80-foot frontages, 85, 82, and 100 foot is minimum with R21. So that's just... Well, we, it's not unusual to do something. As long as the square footage is in the application for each lot that's, that's being divided, that's what we look at, right. the, the square footage. Okay. Now, the, the frontage sometimes there is is an accommodation there to the builder and also to the community because most people in the community end up there having an interest there at stake there when the houses are built, that uh, the, the value of the houses are within uh, what, what they would like to keep the community in. Like my point was, you don't have the frontage with R21 and you do not have the square footage on these three lots. You would with two. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish there to uh, speak on this? <laughs> Members of the board? Uh, Mr. G, I had a question. Actually, uh, Frank, uh -huh. um, I think this was heard, we heard this on July 21st, 2010? Yes, that's correct. And at the time, we did an on-site, and I believe this is the one where on the um, lot one, there was... Um, Something, some concern about the garage, that there was yes. water in the garage and they were going to have, they were going to have to get a CO because it was, they were renting it or using yes. it as a, I what believe, is the result uh, that of that? What <laughs> happened was the building took care of that. We would, we did not bring this before. Uh, you want to get sure. Um, the applicant actually went before the BZA to uh, be granted variances for the garage and for, uh, I believe it was actually, uh, it had additions added onto it. <laughs> and a deck on the second story. Uh, the applicant went before the BZA to be granted those variants, and he was. There was also some conditions of approval with them as well uh, regarding the living quarters, the water supply, and the septic system, which is to be abandoned by the applicant. And I did speak with uh, someone from Mr. Tremarco's office who is the 
attorney for the applicant, and I was informed that they have, in fact, already had the water supply removed and the septic system has been abandoned. Thank you. Any other questions by the board? A motion for the final approval of O'Mara Flat. In the matter of the final plat of O'Mara Flat, number 1122, motion to adopt the resolution is read in accordance with the recommendations of the planning department. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. A motion there on the zoning variances. In the matter of O'Mara Platt, number 1122, motion to adopt the resolution as read in accordance with the Table 1 modification of dimensional requirements recommended by the Planning Department. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Performance bond. Be it resolved that the Chairman of the Planning Board be authorized to sign the performance bond estimate for the map of O'Mara Platt, number 1122, in the amount of $123,875 and establishing an inspection fee of $909,910 and a cash deposit of $3,000, therefore the amount of the performance bond to be posted with the town shall be $120,875. A motion. In the matter of the performance bond for the map of O'Mara Platt, number 1122, motion to adopt the resolution as read in accordance with the recommendation of the Planning Department. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. We thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, the next item on the agenda under Part 2 <clears throat> Excuse me. Item 2, number 2011-10, Anthony Latiri. I just would like to remind the board that attached to the back of this memorandum is an aerial photograph and a copy of the zoning map. The planning board will conduct a public hearing this evening, November 16th, 2011, to consider the above-referenced petition for a change of zone from R43, single-family residence, 43,560 square feet minimum, to wholesale and service industry. The tax lot, one tax lot and part of a second, totals 4.56 acres fronting on Lawrence Road. It appears that a portion of the site is being used for industrial activity without a site plan or appropriate zoning, but is otherwise vacant. The applicant is requesting a change of zone for a 4.56 acre property from R43 to wholesale and service industry to permit a new business to be developed on the site. This is a request to amend the comprehensive plan. In meetings with the planning department staff, the petitioner has stated that he wants to attract or develop a business or businesses that would tap into the expanding opportunities within the alternative energy and green jobs fields. He proposes that these would be non-nuisance industries, but states that such industries would require outdoor storage, which is not permitted in light industrial zoning, the only, in the only industrial zoning category in use in this area. Therefore, he is requesting wholesale service zoning, which does permit outdoor storage, for this parcel as a pilot project to explore whether such industries can be situated in this area. The subject site and surrounding area were originally zoned for moderate density residential uses, 11 units per acre, at the inception of zoning in 1932. Subsequently, this area was rezoned for lower densities of residential development and has been zoned for half-acre zoning since the mid-1950s. This category is now designated R21. However, the subject site is shown on the adopted zoning map within the designation R43, and it appears that this was a mapping error introduced at the time of the most recent readoption of the map. While this will be corrected when the zoning map is next readopted, the zoning shown on the official map is the official zoning designation for the subject property. Therefore, the zoning of the property at this time is R43. It appears that portions of the subject property are being used for industrial activity without a site plan or appropriate zoning. The legality of the uses on the subject site and of the sites to the north has not been determined. 
Part of the property to the north and a few to the south and west have been rezoned from residential to light industrial in a pattern that has discouraged orderly development in this area. To the north of the site, in R21 zoning, the property appears to be in use as a trucking station and other uses that are not consistent with the zoning. To the east, across Lawrence Road, there are single-family homes in R21 zoning. To the south, in light industrial zoning, is a recycling business owned by the petitioner. Farther south, across Old Northport Road, are single-family homes in R21 zoning. To the west and southwest is property zoned light, in light industrial and apparently used for sand mining and a precast concrete business. The primary issue to be addressed in reviewing this petition is whether this entire area, that is the properties west of Lawrence Road, north of Old Northport Road, south of Bruce Lane and the DEC Greenbelt easement, and east of Linden Avenue, should be developed for industrial uses or residential uses. The current mix of light industrial and residential zoning categories will not lead to orderly or sustainable development. Further, continuing or encouraging the mixed zoning is encouraging a mix of incompatible development and should not be pursued. This entire area should be zoned and developed according to a coordinated plan, but no plan has been brought forward by the property owners. Therefore, before considering any rezoning petition, the town should determine whether the permitted development in this area will be industrial or residential. There is no simple answer to what is the best use of the properties in this area. There are advantages and disadvantages to both approaches. For example, this entire area is heavily buffered from the nearby residential communities by a two to 300 foot greenbelt. This should permit industrial activity to continue. However, industrial development is likely to be limited because truck access is poor and the location is relatively remote in comparison to, <coughs> excuse me, industrial properties located along the Long Island Expressway and similar corridors. <coughs> On the other hand, if this area were developed for residential uses, it would be more compatible with the adjacent communities. However, a large portion of this property has been excavated and filled, raising issues as to its suitability for residential development. Further, there are three industrial properties in this area. Coordinating residential development while there are industrial users still operating would be difficult and not recommended. The subject site and the petitioner's proposal are an example of the type of rezoning and site plan matters that are likely to come before the town board in the coming years. Most of the land in the town has been developed or is adjacent to developed property whose use and zoning impact further development. This presents a more complex set of possibilities and constraints when considering zone changes. If the town intends for this area to be developed for industrial uses, which would favor the petitioner's proposal, the next important question is how the town should change the zoning. Should they approve a change of zone for a single parcel in this area, or should the entire area be zoned and developed according to a coordinated plan? The same issues would apply if the town chooses residential development for the area. Because of the size and implications of this decision, it appears to be an action that would require an environmental impact statement. The petitioner has stated <clears throat> that he believes that this change of zone would provide a significant opportunity for economic development for the town. If the petitioner can show how these possibilities could go forward with appropriate coordination and safeguards, the board will likely want to consider such proposals. The planning department recommends that the planning board make this subject of an on-site inspection, field inspection. The following response has been received from the Suffolk County Planning Commission. Pursuant to the requirements of sections A14-14 through 23 of the Suffolk County Administrative Code, the above referenced application which has been submitted to the Suffolk County Planning Commission is considered to be a matter for local determination as there is no apparent, apparent significant countywide or intercommunity impacts. A decision of local determination should not be construed as either an approval or a disapproval. Thank you. Is there anyone here representing the applicant? Could you give your name and address, please? Uh, Steve Cataldo. I'm the architect for the applicant. I'm just going to set up a couple of things. <clears throat> Is there anybody in the audience that's going to want to take a look at this? If you have there, just come down to the front there and you can get a, a look there at the application. Thank you, sir.
You can take the mic this, right out if you this want. This still does come out. Okay, there we go. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this is an application to change the zone on a 4.56 acre parcel on Lawrence Road, just north of Old Northport Road. <coughs> Excuse me. It's about 1,100 feet north of Old Northport Road. And as you can see from the uh, board that I just put up here, um, the subject lot is, lo is uh, colored in pink, and the, the blue lots are light industry zone. The green areas are the buffer zones. Those buffer zones are located, uh, <coughs> in this case, on the opposite side of Lawrence Road, and over here on the opposite side of Old Northport Road. So you can see that the uh, property is buffered to a significant degree. Uh, across Lawrence, you've got about 400 feet from the subject property to the closest house. And across Old Northport, you've got about 800 feet. So the property is significantly buffered across the two roads, and we're talking about heavily wooded areas. The property to the south is zoned light industry and is used for recycling business. Uh, the property to the west is light industry, and that is uh, currently vacant. The property immediately to the north is zoned residential for about 280 feet. And then there's another parcel zone light industry you can see here in blue. So there's a very small area of residential. Otherwise, this parcel would be completely surrounded by light industry. Access to the site uh, relative to trucking is primarily from, old, from Indian Head Road. Uh, distance of about 2,800 feet from the corner of Old Northport and Lawrence to Indian Head Road. It's worth noting that the, the town currently prohibits trucks traveling north on Lawrence Road, traveling east on Old Northport Road, and traveling south on uh, Lawrence. So the only way for trucks to go in and out, or Old North Fort to Indian Head Road. So it shouldn't disturb any residential areas uh, contiguous with the site. Uh, as you can see underneath, what I've done is I've created a, uh, a copy of the Smithtown Zoning Ordinance. I'm sorry, not the ordinance, but the map. And this area is just, it's the card, known as Car Dealer Row. It's uh, Jericho Turnpike. And you can see that the blue area, again, is light industry. The pink area is all WSI zone. So there's a pattern of mixing WSI and LI zone. The applicant would like WSI as opposed to the light industry zone as stated by the planning department because of outdoor storage. That's a very big reason. He would like to encourage small businesses. Uh, WSI properties typically can be smaller. Uh, the dimensional requirements of WSI are very different than the LI zone. Uh, they're more friendly to smaller businesses. Um, So the smaller lot sizes are important. Outdoor storage is important. Uh, we feel that this would stimulate economic development within the town, um, not to mention the taxes uh, generated by this development would bolster the town uh, tax rolls. And there's no children produced, so to speak, as a result of this application.
the area to the north, all in here, is characterized by open land uses, as stated by the planning department. Uh, if you look at the aerial photographs as part of your uh, application, you can see all of the disturbance that's taken place over the years, and it has taken place over quite a few years, uh, at least back to the 50s. The existing WSI uh, properties located along Jericho Turnpike and 347 have a very high price tag associated with them. Most small businessmen can't afford to purchase those properties, uh, especially in the car dealer area. Um, and to that, I'd like to have George Tunis, a local real estate broker, just come up and fill you in on, on a few details relative to that. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the Planning Board. My name is George Tunis, president of George Tunis Real Estate, Inc., 1174 Veterans Memorial Highway in Hopog, New York. Um, on the uh, WSI zoning, basically from 347 Middle Country Road, Jericho Turnpike, all the way to Coast Parkway, the predominant vacant land in that stretch is WSI zoning. Over the years, the values of these properties because of the growth in Smithtown has focused on retail, therefore increasing the price tag on the WSI zone properties. However, since it's not zone retail, people cannot use it, let alone afford to purchase the WSI zone. Uh, and prices vary from 500000 to some people are asking almost a million dollars an acre for a WSI zone. I probably field at least two calls a week in my office for people seeking legal outdoor storage to create, relocate, or start up businesses. Um, I have tenants looking right now. I have a solar panel manufacturer who's just going to get into the business that needs an outdoor storage facility to store their materials to manufacture the panels. Um, there is a Stony Brook University incubator program in the works who's going to be seeking a parcel of land such as this to create uh, the growth of new businesses where they can start up in an area like this and grow. And the value of a property in this area versus Jericho Turnpike um, will definitely be prohibitive on Jericho Turnpike where it will be affordable here. Um, I think it's a great use for the property. There is a big need for it. And uh, even local residents who live in Smithtown who have businesses out of the area would love to come closer to home and operate their businesses as well as live in the town of Smithtown. Thank you. Questions? Uh, yeah, I had a question for him. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tunis, as a, as a real estate expert, is it your opinion that if this <coughs> zone change uh, was granted in the applicant's favor, that you could fill uh, this property on their behalf if they were to retain you? I have one tenant alone that needs 30,000 square feet for a facility for uh, distribution and outdoor storage of their materials. And I'm not talking about. Uh, loud smoke stacks and noises, just materials they have to store outside to bring into the building, cut them, fabricate their product, and then ship them out. So this isn't anything that would be disturbing to the environment or to the local community. Is that yes? Is that, do you think you could fill this property? I could fill it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Tunis also. If I may. Mr. Tunis? Uh, from your expertise, what do you feel would be the uh, jolt of uh, monetary economic development in this little quadrant? As, as far as what do you think would be the, uh, the injection of any type of monetary labor, construction costs for the town of Smithtown? Um, it, it, it depends how much building 
you let them build on the site. I don't know if the density would be 17%, 30%. So it's all a matter of uh, arithmetic when you get to that point. But I would say that you could probably create 200 jobs uh, permanently. You could probably create half of that on a construction to so develop. It, so, so it would have a positive economic. Uh, big, big positive. Uh, Not only bring uh, construction jobs, permanent jobs, and we're bringing tax dollars straight into the community and straight into the school district with no outlay because, like Mr. Cataldo said, there aren't going to be any children living in the industrial buildings that have to go to school. So it'll be pure income to the school district. Okay. Thank if, you. If this application were declined, say, uh, by us and then the town board who ultimately makes the decision, what do you feel your uh, chances of filling the property would be in, in that event? Uh, I don't think you could fill it. There's plenty of industrial vacant land all over Suffolk County that people can go to, and there is a major need right now for this outdoor storage type of facility for an industrial unit user to keep manufacturing on Long Island. Thank you. You're welcome. How, how big a uh, how big a facility would be constructed <coughs> in order there to uh, accommodate there the need there to do the fabrication of whatever? Mm -hmm. Your client wanted. Well, I have clients that need 10,000 foot buildings, 50,000 foot buildings, 30,000. I have one for. Some people only need 5,000 square feet. So there, are, there are different businesses that need, need different sizes. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just straight distribution companies that have trucks to park outdoor, and they don't have any materials to store outside. So, and there's a great need for that because you really can't do that in a lot of towns. Okay. Are you finished? Okay. Thank uh, you. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes there to talk on this? Actually, there's uh, uh, one of the questions you asked, Mr. Chairman, relative to, or, or I believe it was me, you, Mr. Roshman. Um, if the, the application was denied, it would be continue to be residential because it's, it's currently residential. I I think ultimately it would be R21. Um, but nobody would build a house here. So it would remain undeveloped. Okay. And it, since it's sandwiched in between, essentially between all industrial properties, I don't think you're, you're ever going to see a residential development on this piece. Thank you. You understand we're going to do an on-site? Take yes. a look at this. Um, are there, are there any other questions? Frank, any questions? No? No questions from the audience? All right. A motion to do an on-site for this application. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion in regards to the project before us for Alateri that we make it subject of an on-site. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. We thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, the next item on the agenda under part three, item eight, number 923, Village, Wood, Village Woods at Midwood. The applicant requests a waiver to amend the original conditions of approval in order to maintain a staircase and fencing installed in a conservation easement on lot number eight within the subdivision known as Village Woods at Midwood, number 923. The map of Village Woods at Midwood, number 923, was granted conditional final approval from the Planning Board on August 6, 1997. 
This application was approved for a nine lot subdivision fronting on an existing town road known as Midwood Avenue and a proposed street to be known as Cobblestone Court. At the time of approval, conditions were placed on the final map to be filed regarding the conservation easement. Specifically, condition N states, a conservation area shall be established as shown on the revised tree preservation and land clearing plan received by the planning department on July 18th, 1997. This area shall be shown on the map to be filed in the office of the Suffolk County Clerk. Within the conservation area, vegetation removal except for hazardous trees, regrading, placement of fill, structures, and construction activities shall be prohibited. The conservation easement was conditioned for this subdivision in order to minimize further regrading or destruction of the steep slopes, greater than 15%, within the easement area for lots seven, eight, and nine. The steep slopes divide the rear yard into two areas. The first area is the conservation easement located directly behind the rear patio and pool area. The second area is the remainder of the rear yard that is mostly level and is approximately 18,800 square feet. The applicant informed planning that the fence was erected within the easement to comply with the town code for the in-ground pool that was installed in the rear yard. Additionally, the staircase was installed to gain access to the rear yard beyond the easement to create a play area for their children. There is a statement of explanation by the applicant attached to your memorandum. The Engineering, Highway, and Traffic Safety Departments have no objection to this waiver request. Planning staff performed an on-site inspection of the property and concluded that it does not appear that the applicant removed any trees or vegetation from within the easement during the installation of the fence or staircase. Additionally, the steep slopes were not disturbed or regraded for the installation of the staircase. The staircase was installed on grade within the easement and anchored to the retaining wall at the top of the slope, which is part of the patio and pool area. The planning department has no objection to the applicant's request. However, planning recommends that, in lieu of waiving the requirement of maintaining the conservation easement, no further encroachment into the easement or removal of trees or vegetation be permitted. The planning department recommends the board make this application the subject of an on-site inspection. And the letter is not attached. Is there uh, anyone the here representing the applicant? Okay. Come to the mic and give your name and address, please. And you can take the mic out of it. the, if you want. Uh, Mark Michel, 15 Cobblestone Court. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, before I start, I actually put together some uh, pictures and a, a copy of the survey for you guys, for the board, if I may distribute. Why don't you give it to uh, Mr. DeRubis? Okay. I have copies for each member. There was a, was there an affidavit of posting on this? Yes. Okay. So we are requ requesting this waiver for the staircase on the easement area so that we can effectively maintain our property, uh, protect the integrity of the easement area itself, uh, and ensure the safety of anybody going down into, this, into the lower area. Uh, our property is just shy of an acre. The uh, area uh, at the easement is about a third of an acre. The lower portion of the property is, is about a third of an acre as well. Um, this lower yard can only be accessed by going through the easement area, which is the reason for the staircase. Uh, it's impossible to effectively maintain the lower yard without causing damage to the hill. Um, the staircase was built on grade of the easement. We did not regrade. We did not alter the slope. Staircase ensures that the hill is not eroded each time we go down to the lower portion of the property. Uh, this gives us a safe way to carry things out as well as go up and down ourselves. The alternative for many years was to climb and scamper up and down the hill with debris in tow. As homeowners, it's our responsibility to maintain our property. This includes basic maintenance, as well as making sure we have no dead or dying trees that potentially can fall and injure somebody, or take out the power lines, which run along the rear of the property line itself. We also have a substantial amount of poison ivy that infests this property. The, in particular, most of the area behind 16 Chivalry Lane is infested with poison ivy and requires constant maintenance in order to keep it under control. Additionally, there's an invasive vine that is growing in the lower portion of the property. 
This vine climbs into the trees, chokes them off, and they die. This vine is creeping into the easement area, and it's also creeping up to the upper section of the property. We have been spent, we've spent years trying to keep this vine under control to protect these trees. Besides that basic maintenance uh, and controlling the invasive vines and removing poisonous vegetation, the staircase is necessary to remove debris that has been accumulated over the years by the abutting properties on Chivalry Lane. The homeowners have been using our lower property as a place to dispose of their unwanted items over the years. There is a mound of excavated earth behind the home at number 14 Chivalry Lane. This mound appears to be the excavation from a pool that was put in some time ago. Buried in this mound are railroad ties, concrete pieces, metal pails, and what appears to be a, wheel, a wheelbarrow which has not fully been unearthed yet. Since this mound is clearly on our property, and it's, since it's illegal to bury debris like this, I need a way to access this area so I can remove this debris. When we first moved into the home, we owned dogs and received permission from the building department to add a six-foot chain link fence around the entire property line. Um, and I butted this, ch this chain link fence to the stockade ho uh, fences, or the, the stock sorry, excuse me, the stockade fences of the homes at 12 and 14 Chivalry Lane. Since this area has always been hard to access, we never knew until recently the stockade fences had gaping holes which allows continued access to our yard. Additionally, the homeowners at 16 cleared far more property than actually belonged to them, and the company that ran our fence ran along the cleared area of that property. This fence is about 25 feet off the true property line. Our property that is located, on our property located behind 16 Chivalry, Chivalry, we have found landscaping debris, construction debris, rubbish thrown over the fence. While we can't tell you who put the items on our property, we can tell you some of the items that we've hauled out over the years. These include big wheel trikes, plastic cups, shovels, wine bottles, beer and liquor bottles, rusted out stoves, old chlorinators, an old middle swing set, carpeting, electrical conduit, stepping stones, and, and more. Frankly, it doesn't matter to us who put it there, but I can't leave it on the property. As the homeowners of 15 Cobblestone Court, is our attention to fully maintain our entire property in a proper fashion. This includes maintaining all property lines and fencing. It also means making sure our trees are healthy and maintained, as well as removing trees that are diseased, vine infested, and dangerous. It requires removing of both the debris that has been dumped on our property as well as the hazardous and poisonous vegetation in accordance with town, county, and state requirements and codes. In order to achieve having a safe lower yard, we are requesting a waiver for the staircase in the easement area. Not only does the staircase allow us to effectively maintain the property, the staircase protects the integrity of the hill. Do I have any questions? Okay, uh, apparently that uh, there's some violations on, on uh, chivalry, on the properties on chivalry that have caused their, to spill over onto your property. Is that uh, the point you're trying to make? Well, yeah, I mean, the, they, they've been using the property for decades as a place to dump. So one of the things I need to do is I have to remove this. I have young kids. I don't think there's any reason why my kids can't use the backyard. I can't let them use the backyard as it is because I don't want them tripping over broken glass. I don't want them tripping over rusted out metal swing sets. So that stuff has to be removed. It's have you have you ever called there uh, the uh, building department there about uh, the violations there? I have reported this to the building department. Uh, house number 14 has agreed to move their fence and their shed off our property lines. House number 16, yeah, I'm sorry, 12. House number 16 has agreed to remove their shed from over the, over the property line and just, you know, remove that, that part of the, the stuff. House number 14 has disputed our survey and I believe has requested to get their own survey to find where the property lines are so they can put their own fences up. In addition to both of that, the house at 12 fences backwards, house at 14, which has a pool, has a backward fence. Now, my kids are old enough to realize they shouldn't climb a fence, but if my kids have a friend over and he climbs the fence, it's dangerous. You know, the, we are trying to do what we can to support and maintain this property. You know, the homeowners over there have not wanted to listen to us. They have, you know, they've given us a lot of grief over this. We're just trying to, you know, get rid of a lot of garbage that's been left down there over the years. How long have you lived there? Since it was built. Which was? Nin we moved in in 98. Okay. We're going to do an on-site. Uh, do you have any objections there to us coming across your property there to look at that easement there rather than trying there to 
figure out what's going on in the properties and behind you. Not at all. All I ask is uh, you, you know, coordinate with a phone call so I can, you know, somebody can be there to escort you in. See, our main concern with conservation easements is trying there to hold the property in a, in a manner that, that makes it there as a water ramp runoff that helps the aquifer, not there, not there to be a dump, okay? Uh, and I completely agree, and to be honest, nobody has a greater interest in this, this property being maintained than I do. I have a pool and a house at the top of this hill. If I have runoff, if the, the, wall co if the hill collapses, it affects me more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. So I agree, the integrity of the hill is critical and it's important. This is the reason the staircase was installed. Us climbing up and down the hill, I'm not exactly the smallest guy around. Every time I step on a hill like this, it's going to collapse under me. It's gonna run, it's gonna, you know, I'm gonna crush down the dirt, the earth, and it's gonna slide down. Even, even my, my young kids, they're gonna go up and down the hill, they're gonna damage it. A staircase like this protects the hill itself. Okay. Thank Is there you. anyone else in the audience that wishes to speak on this application? Will you come forward and give your name and address, please? And where you live in relation to gentlemen. Just uh, Michael Cooley, 14 Chivalry Lane. So the south side of my property backs 15 Cobblestone Court. Mm -hmm. um, if we may, we have uh, a petition that all the neighbors that touch the easement have signed in opposition to the staircase and to the clearing of the trees that have, have already taken place as far as uh, any further uh, disruption to the easement, if we may present that uh, to the board. Would you give that to the planning director, please? <clears throat> so it was explained to us when we moved in, and it was a big part of the reason that we bought our house, that there was a conservation easement there. It was not to be disturbed. We would always have a wooded view, um, and nothing could be done on the property. And that's one of the main reasons that my wife and I bought our house about a year and a half ago. And you're at 14? 14. Um, some of the allegations that have been made against my property I'd like to address. Uh, first of all, as I said, we've only been there about a year and a half. The built-in pool in my yard has been there 30 plus years. It is my understanding that when they dug out the pool, they did place the fill behind um, what they believe to be the rear of the property. It was wooded for many years. I don't think the property lines were clear. Uh, that was nothing of my doing. The fence was put up before I got there. Nothing of my doing that it was the wrong way. I have indicated to the town that I intend to turn the fence around and make it proper. I was not aware that it wasn't to code when I moved in. And frankly, I'm surprised that I was allowed to close on my house. Given that it wasn't, it was never brought to my attention. Um, as far as the debris, that the homeowners mention. Um, it's my understanding, and the person who lives next door to me, in fact, has lived in his house since it was built on Chivalry Lane. Um, the woods that now back behind my house, and are now part of 15 Cobblestone Court's backyard, was what I'm told a dumping ground for the old property that used to be uh, part of the 5.5 or so acres that was then made into Cobblestone Court development. Um, so the folks who lived there were actually the ones where the, the debris came from originally is my understanding. Obviously I wasn't there so I can't substantiate that. Um, and it's also my understanding that a lot of those paving stones and other things that wound up down there, which are not clearly visible, um, but allegedly wound up down there, came from the builder when they actually built the property on that site. So I just wanted to address those before I, uh, before I make some other points. So uh, the homeowners uh, indicated that they want to use it as a play area for their kids. We're zoned, I believe it's R15, R15 for one third acre residential. Everyone on Chivalry has a third of an acre. Most of the properties on Cobblestone Court have a little bit more than a third of an acre. Um, there are only two properties, 15 and 17, that have about an acre or more. Um, given the zoning, it was never intended that those properties be totally used. It's totally wooded, there's easement there for a reason, and it was, it was never intended that that property actually get used. It's a big slope, it's not flat at all. Um, additionally, uh, the homeowners at 15 Cobblestone Court chose to put in a large deck on their property. They chose to put in a built-in pool. 
that's play area for their kids. It's not my fault that they put that in and now they don't have much grass. They shouldn't impede on an easement because of that. The town of Smithtown has 22 parks and another 15 or so schools with open playing fields. Two of those are within walking distance of Cobblestone Court. So this could easily be a play area for children elsewhere that doesn't have to disrupt the easement. The staircase that is referenced is not to code per the Town of Smithtown Building Department. It doesn't have any railings. It's very steep. There are no footers. It's only attached to a retaining wall, which was meant to hold up the backyard and the pool, not an additional staircase with extra weight going up and down it. To bring this to code, to dig footers would only further disrupt the easement, and we're opposed to that. So we'd like to see this staircase removed. Um, and if I may, this was submitted as a scenic easement, if I may read a definition. An easement created for the benefit of a particular property or for the benefit of public for the express purpose of maintaining and preserving an existing view. An easement is created to preserve a property in its natural state. A scenic easement is acquired on choice property to preserve its aesthetic quality and prevent building on the property. Um, the plans have already been presented to you and they state clearly on them Within the conservation easement area, vegetation removal, except hazardous trees, regrading, the placement of fill, structures, and construction activities shall be prohibited. The same plan state, the land shown on this map as roads, streets, or highways, or for the widening thereof, and also easements, recharge basins, park areas, and all other lands indicated as dedicated for the public use are hereby irrevocably offered for dedication to the town of Smithtown. Once an easement is put in place and agreed upon by the original owner of the property, which was the builder, it's in place forever. There's no reason to allow any um, change to, uh, to this easement. And we are uh, loudly opposed to that as per the, the uh, petition that we've presented to the board, again, signed by all members that touch the easement. So 15 Cobblestone Court actually hits about, the property actually hits about four or five houses on Chivalry Lane. Um, we talked to all the neighbors, and uh, some of them have drainage issues already, which the easement is put in place to protect. Um, additionally, it stated that no trees were cut down on the easement, and that's because it took the building department weeks to get out there, or the planning department weeks to get out there to actually survey the damage. Every which weekend, the homeowners were out there cutting up trees, putting things in pl black plastic bags, and throwing away the evidence, essentially. My wife and I have pictures of trees littered all over the easement to present uh, to the board, if we may, to prove our, uh, our case that trees were in fact cut down on the easement. And just by having a staircase and allowing access to the easement and getting down there, it's gonna disturb it. I mean, you're inviting problems. Whereas before the staircase was there, they were never down there. Now that the staircase is there that I have to look at from essentially every room in my house, when I was promised when I bought it by the town of Smithtown that this was forever be woods, you know, I don't want to look at it. I don't want to look at people down there. It's for a slope. Um, it's for drainage issues. It's also, I also spoke to the uh, Suffolk County Water Authority, and uh, they told me that it is a natural recharge basin for uh, the aquifer. Any heavily wooded land that's over an acre is naturally a recharge basin for an aquifer and should not be disturbed. That's another reason that the easement was put into place. So um, please hear our opposition as we stand here tonight, consider that during your site visit. Um, and I will tell you, you're gonna go there and it's not gonna look like not much happened. That's because it's been a year of cleanup every weekend, okay? And we have some of the pictures here that, that showed what it looked like before uh, they were allowed a year to cut everything up and remove it before inspection. Okay, you know we're gonna do an on-site. Do you object there coming across your property to do an on-site from the back of yours? No. Okay. Do you wanna hand those up? We have identification. In other words, if somebody wants well, we to see, identification. we have identification there to identify ourselves. Um, somebody who couldn't be here tonight asked uh, my wife to read something on her behalf. Um, yep. She is a professional engineer. She's also a neighbor, mm -hmm. and she states her opinion in this document. Yeah, we're going to we're going to go over and take a look at both both properties here. Um, she just wants to read something. Just give your yeah. name and address also. My name is Shannon Cooley, and I live at 14 Chivalry Lane, and I would like to read a letter from um, Marion Wapiski, who lives at 18 Chivalry Lane, who could not be here tonight. Uh, she's very sick. Um, is that all right if I read that letter? Okay. Okay. Yes. 
Um, my interest in this matter is to prevent erosion of the steep slope where the scenic easement applies and to ensure that the retaining wall at the top of the slope isn't going to fail. The subdivision approval for Cobblestone Court was contingent on having a scenic easement in place for areas where the slope is 15% or greater. The natural vegeta vegetation on the slope was to remain in place to minimize erosion of the slope due to runoff. Erosion is something that occurs over time with every rainfall and snow melt. It has a cumulative effect on a steep slope. So while the newly cleared slope may seem fine at this time, the soils will continue to wash away and weaken the slope. It is very important that the bare slope be revegetated with a good ground cover to protect it. The reason erosion of the slope is a real concern here is the retaining wall at the top of the slope which stabilizes the area around the house. The retaining wall was designed and built long before the staircase was even considered. It appears from a distance that the staircase was attached directly to the retaining wall and now applies a load on the wall. If the wall was not designed to accommodate that load, it could fail over time. If the retaining wall fails, it could result in settlement around the house and cracking of the walls. If there is a pool or patio also supported by the retaining wall, they could also fail. If the town issues a variance, I would urge them to at least require a certification for the staircase and the modified retaining wall from either a professional engineer or registered architect, indicating that it is safe and was properly designed and that limits the town's liability should it ever fail in the future. If the staircase was not properly designed, then I would encourage the town to have it removed. In any case, please acknowledge that the scenic easement should be maintained and require that the steep slope be revegetated with a solid ground cover. Thank you for your consideration of this matter. Sincerely yours, Marion Wapiski. Uh, W-Y-P-Y-S-K-I. And I also have copies of this letter for each member of the board, if I may present it. Okay. That's all right. I have one additional point that's called out in our uh, our letter, um, our petition against against this that I I would like to just point out to the board. Um, should you decide in favor of 15 Cobblestone Court and letting them uh, keep the staircase, uh, we'd strongly encourage that privacy plantings are put up uh, around the uh, borders of the property to maintain some, some of that scenic easement that, uh, that we were promised when we moved in so we don't have to uh, just look at an ugly staircase and the hill that used to contain trees that were cut down. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on this application? A motion for an on-site. Mr. Chairman, the Mayor of uh, Village Woods, number 923, I move that we do an on-site inspection. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. We thank you. Mr. Chairman, the next item on the agenda under part three, item nine, number 1005, Estates of Elegance. Mr. Chairman, this item was brought before the planning board at the November 2nd meeting, planning board meeting, uh, pending an on-site inspection. I understand that all of the board members have done an, an inspection of the property, and I have a recommendation to read onto the record. The Planning Department offers the following resolution for the Board's consideration. Be it resolved that the Planning Board hereby approves the request of Peter Massaro to waive the requirement of installing 483 linear feet of sidewalk along Northern Boulevard and Wexford Court within the subdivision, <coughs> excuse me, known as Estates of Elegance Number 1005. Mr. Chairman, this is the Planning Department's recommendation for Estates of Elegance. Is there anyone here uh, representing the applicant? Nobody? <coughs> Planning board members, any questions? Um, a motion. In the matter of the States of Elegance, number 1005, motion to adopt the resolution as read in accordance with the recommendation of the Planning Department. 
Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Mr. Chairman, the next item on the agenda under part three, number 11, number 1098, Parnell Estates. Mr. Chairman, this application was brought before the planning board at the June 15th uh, planning board meeting, at which time it was adjourned, uh, pending an on-site by the board. Additionally, there were some issues raised by one of the uh, local residents regarding the lack of sidewalks along Plymouth Boulevard, and the planning department has done an on-site inspection, and we do have an analysis of our inspection and, and offer some, uh, some recommendations to the board, if you'll allow me to read it. The planning department conducted a field inspection of all sidewalks in the vicinity of this subdivision and determined that there are existing sidewalks sporadically constructed on Plymouth Boulevard. While sidewalks exist on both sides of Plymouth north of the subdivision site, there are no sidewalks on either side of the road south of the site for approximately 1,500 feet. Plymouth Boulevard is a heavily traveled town road that runs from Jericho Turnpike to Old Northport Road. Motorists traveling from the Kings Park area use Plymouth as a direct route to and from Comac, Hopog, and Smithtown. Plymouth Boulevard runs through a large residentially zoned area of single-family home zoned R10, 10,000 square feet minimum, and R21, 21,780 square feet minimum. And there are four schools and a firehouse located along it. Due to the high traffic volume from the local residents, motor motorists traveling to and from their destinations, and school buses, there is a need for continuous sidewalks in this area to provide safety for pedestrians traveling along Plymouth Boulevard, in particular, the children walking to and from school. The planning department objects to the applicant's request not to install the 185 feet of required sidewalk on Plymouth Boulevard. However, the board may consider accepting a payment in lieu of constructing the sidewalks from the applicant in the amount of $1,809.50 calculated as shown in the memorandum. The funds would be added to the town street tree and sidewalk fund for future installation of sidewalks along Plymouth Boulevard. The planning department offers the following resolution for the board's consideration. Be it resolved that the planning board hereby denies the request of J. Bradford Keneally to waive the requirement of installing 185 linear feet of sidewalk along Plymouth Boulevard within the subdivision known as Parnell Estates number 1098. The board will accept a payment in lieu of constructing the sidewalks from the applicant in the amount of $1,809.50. The funds will be added to the town street tree and sidewalk fund for future installation of sidewalks along Plymouth Boulevard. Mr. Chairman, this is the planning department's recommendation for Parnell Estates, number 1098. Is there anyone here representing the applicant? Brad Keneally, 553 Broadway, Massapequa, New York. I consent to the uh, board's uh, application. You agree to the, the board's recommendation decision. of the Yes, I've spoken to uh, Blaze a number of times, and I have no objection to that. Is there anyone here that wishes to talk on this application? Members of the board, any yeah, questions? Yes. Um, not, not for you, but just for the, uh, the idea in general. I understand. Uh, could you give us an idea, Mr. DeRubius, as to when uh, this $1,800 would be applied towards sidewalks in this area? After this, uh, after the original public hearing, I informed the board that I would be speaking with the uh, highway superintendent, and the as to what how he would approach that uh, the construction of sidewalks in this particular area, because I believe he had indicated to the residents that he was supporting uh, uh, doing that. Uh, he said that he was asking for money in his budget, and and I believe that is the subject of. Uh, a, a budgetary issue with the town board right now in determining the budget. But it would appear that the highway mm. superintendent has agreed that at a future time he will install the segment of uh, sidewalks that are needed in this particular area. And if my memory serves me, this was the, uh, the concerned resident was uh, a parent of a special needs child? Was, is that the person who came down here? I believe, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So my problem with this, and while I'm sure the town board and the highway superintendent would appreciate $1,809, uh, 
is that we're not really doing anything here. We're saying maybe this money at some future date is going to put a sidewalk in the area. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to vote no on this thing. Uh, I think we should, while it's a small piece of uh, sidewalk in this area, you have to start somewhere. And, and that's just my feeling on it. I'm not comfortable waiving anything in this particular area. Okay. That's my feeling. Well, if there's uh, going to be no, I think that uh, we better wait for a full mm -hmm. measure of the board before we do vo a vote there so we know how the full board will sit on this area and we'll adjourn this. I, I've been waiting quite some time to get this bond released. I know. This, I've been back here four or five times. This, there are no sidewalks for 1,500 feet going in that direction. The previous recommendation of the planning department was to waive the sidewalk requirement. I've I, gone I disagree above with that. and beyond. I'm just saying that was the previous recommendation of your in-house people. Uh, you know, I've waited quite some time to get this done. I've, I, that's what the cost is, I mean, to do it. I don't to have a problem making a vote on this right now. I'll make a motion to, de to deny uh, your request for waiving the sidewalks in the area. See if there's a second. If not, someone else can make another motion. Well, uh, before we go with that motion, Adam, if it's okay with you, I'd like to ask Frank a... I, I, again, Frank, I just want to ask you a question, if I can, regarding this. We keep hearing that the uh, highway department has, what, positive feelings of putting sidewalks in. Are they going to do it, and what is the time frame? Because I think what the frustration is, is, again, we were here during the prior waiver request, we first heard this, about the, I guess, the traffic situations, it's a double yellow line, and the lack of sidewalks proceeding south on Plymouth. When do you think highways, under what time frame, will be proceeding with full sidewalks? And because if we're taking this money, this $1,900, and putting it into a sidewalk fund, when are we going to be implementing the usage of that money? The short answer is, is I can't answer that question because the magnitude of this particular project is rather significant. When you take the cost that are you talking about here is in the neighborhood of probably a quarter of a million dollars. And that type of an issue is something that is highly debated and, uh, and it becomes a policy decision for the board, the town board to undertake. And you're asking me to try to figure out how the town board's going to balance what they're going to do in one area versus another area. I literally cannot answer that question. You so. agree with the premise that absolutely should be sidewalks in this area? Yes, I, I do agree with that, yes. And I, I think that everybody agrees, so do you understand, that there should be sidewalks mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is find a way there to... I, I understand, but the, there are no sidewalks there all the way down to all the way down to uh, Jericho, except for a few sporadic sidewalks. You approved a subdivision right there without sidewalks just recently. And if, if this same person with a disabled child were down just south, on, uh, south of uh, Plymouth, there's a, a six or seven mile stretch. Would you put in six or seven miles of road? This is over a mile and a half of, road, of uh, sidewalks. I'm not aware of Proving anything without sidewalks in this area. I, I could be uh, wrong. There's of a course. subdivision right there. You well, can look at it. I'm not aware right of that. No, well, the, the thing is that the concern is for the schools that are in that immediate area. Do you understand why the board feels that there needs to be a sidewalk there? The urgency of getting it is something we're trying to see if there's a way. If not, then there's going to be a motion there to deny. The, your, your waiver and you're going to end up having to do the sidewalks. Now, what I would like to do is find out if the full, there's one member of the board missing and if there's no objection there from um, Adam uh, that we would wait for the, we'd give you a, we'll give you the opportunity there to come again and uh, when we have a, a full board here to be able okay, to... I, I just want to get this over one way or the other, not have to come back 
and you know, I, I mean, from the beginning, they said they didn't want sidewalks there. So you want to settle the tonight? The then. I'm, I'm I just like to have a date when okay. the rest of the board okay. is going. He's to made be a here. motion. He's made a motion not to waive the sidewalks. Is there a second for the motion? I'll second that motion not to waive the sidewalks. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Sorry, sir. No, I'll, I'll put them in. I mean. I mean, this is crazy. It's a start. You, you've dragged yeah, me back here four or five times. It's really not. No, fair. you don't have to come back you again. Don't have to go back. Let's do the sidewalks. Mr. Chairman, the next item on the agenda under part six, item 17, number 1133A, Oakwood Valley Estates. Uh, before I begin reading the memorandum, Mr. Chairman, I just want to uh, refresh the board's memory that at the last planning board meeting at, uh, on November 2nd, there was an application brought before the board for uh, a, an amendment to the filed map of Maggie Estates and the board did approve that amendment, and that amendment uh, is the predecessor to this application, which we're about to read. The applicant is requesting to make a correction to the conditionally approved final map to reflect the amended town right-of-way adjacent to the subdivision known as Oakwood Valley Estates number 1133A. The map of Oakwood Valley Estates number 1133A received conditional final approval from the planning board on February 16, 2011. This application was approved for a two-lot subdivision fronting on two existing town roads known as Alexander Avenue and Maggie Court. Lot number one contains an existing single-family home fronting on Alexander Avenue, and lot number two has frontage on Maggie Court. At the time of final approval, there was a town-owned parcel, formerly known as Suffolk County Tax Map number 118-3-48.7, running the length of the north side of Maggie Court. This parcel was dedicated to the town at the time of final approval for the subdivision immediately to the south, known as Maggie Estates, number 1083. The dedication was conditioned in order to provide a buffer between the proposed Maggie Court cul-de-sac and the existing single-family residence to the north. The single-family residence is now known as Map of Oakwood Valley Estates, number 1133A. All lots fronting on town-owned rights-of-way have the right of ingress and egress to the property. Any lot that crosses over town-owned property for access to, the, to a right-of-way must enter into an easement agreement with the town. All utilities are subject to the same requirements. Lot number two of Oakwood Valley Estates did not have frontage on a town right-of-way. Residents of lot number two would have to cross the former town designated parcel 48.7 to reach Maggie Court, requiring an easement agreement between the residents and the town. In order to eliminate the need for the town to execute easement agrees, the easement agreements with residents or utility companies for access along Maggie Court, the town requested an amendment to the town right-of-way by adding lot number 48.7 to Maggie Court. The board approved the amendment at the November 2, 2011 planning board meeting. The correction is requested because the applicant wants the final map to reflect the amended town right-of-way prior to filing it with the Suffolk County Clerk. The planning department has no objection to the applicant's request and recommends approval. The planning department offers the following resolution for the board's consideration. Be it resolved that the planning board hereby approves a correction to the final map of Oakwood Valley Estates, number 1133A, to reflect the amended town right-of-way known as Maggie Court. Mr. Chairman, this is the planning department's recommendation for Oakwood Valley Estates, number 1133A. Uh, in this typical thorough fashion, Mr. Donatio has summed up the situation. It's a tale of two subdivision maps. Uh, I will refrain from repeating uh, what I, I've just heard read so mellifluously. 
uh, and just refer to the exhibit that I've posted before the board. Our two-lot subdivision is outlined in uh, dark blue. The green area is the town-owned parcel, which is currently identified as section 188, block 3, lot 48.7. By virtue of your decision on November 2nd, a copy of which decision I will hand up, from the tax map of Suffolk County and thereby obviate the need for the residents of this subdivision to obtain variance relief, excuse me, waiver uh, easement relief, excuse me, easement relief, whether for water lines, buried utilities, or for driveways. Uh, I'll hand up to the board just for their uh, ready reference a copy of the subdivision map, photograph, an aerial photograph showing the strip in question, and finally a copy of the uh, proposed language that we would put on the map of Oakwood Valley Estates to memorialize the action taken by this board on November 2nd uh, in pertinent part as follows. Suffolk County tax map section 188 block 3 lot 48.7 was conveyed to the adjacent town of Smithtown right-of-way known as Maggie Court by Planning Board Resolution dated November 2nd 2011, a certified copy of which with a meets and bounds description of the parcel was filed in the office of the Suffolk County Clerk on November blank 2011 at Liber blank, page blank. Uh, following the action of this board this evening, we'll uh, amend our map to add that notation. We'll remove the reference in the lower right hand corner, which is an easement detail no longer necessary, and that is our application. We respectfully respect, re request your favorable consideration. Adjective you used before. <laughs> I learned that at the town of Huntington Planning Board. They use it all the time. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on this application? Here then, a motion to approve the correction. Motion to approve a correction to the final map of Oakwood Valley Estates, number 11330A, to reflect the amended town right of way known as Maggie Court. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Send that down to Frank. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, final item on the agenda, uh, item 19 under Part 8, I'm sorry, uh, item 20 under Part 9, is the adoption of minutes for the July 6, 2011 Planning Board meeting. A motion for the uh, minutes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a, a motion to adopt the minutes that are uh, read for July 6, 2011. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. And we have a, all have a copy of Mr. Tremarco's letter for Yes. For this. Okay. Any other business, Frank? No. Nope. Anybody else? Happy Thanksgiving. No. Happy, Thanksgiving. Happy, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. With a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So Third. ordered. Okay. <laughs>